Okay, so how is everyone today? Cold. Cold? Yeah. Wet? Great? Okay, so last time we talked about, uh, we were talking about polynomials. We're still talking about polynomials. Uh, specifically, the last thing we said last time was the rational zeros theorem. So let's recall what that is. So today's the eighth, right? Yes. Yeah. So the rational zeros theorem It says that if you have a polynomial, f of x, given by a n x to n plus dot 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 plus a2 x squared plus a1 x plus a0. So there's several, several requirements that must be met. <coughs> so in the first place, n has to be positive. So what that means is that we're not talking about a constant polynomial. Uh, it must be the case that the leading coefficient is not 0. Also, the constant coefficient is not 0. And all of the coefficients are integers. So they're all, they're all integers. <coughs> Yeah, Z for Zalin, which is the way you say integer or c counting or something like that in German. Uh, <clears throat> so I lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Then, then the rational zeros, okay, rational zeros of f of x, and now I have to give an, a parenthetical, if any. Because there, there doesn't need to be any. Uh, must be of the form uh, must be of the form plus or minus a factor of the constant coefficient divided by a factor of the leading coefficient. Okay. So, so that's, that's the last thing that we said last time. Uh, and here's, here's uh, an example of that. So any, any question about the statement of the theorem? Okay. <coughs> So first, uh, so for example, uh, find all rational zeros okay uh, and the 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 function in question is f of x equal to x cubed minus 5x squared. plus 2x plus 1. Find all rational zeros. OK, so that is to say, I want you to tell me all of the x values such that x is rational. That is to say, it's a ratio of two integers. Uh, and also, when you plug it into f, you get a 0. So can someone give us an example of a number that's not rational? Pi, pi is an example. Square root of two, not rational. If it's the ratio of two integers, so like three over four, okay. that's rational. Uh, similarly, five is rational. Why is five rational? Because it could be reckoned as five over one. Okay, so find all the rational zeros. Well, from the rational zeros theorem, we could list out all of the conceivable rational zeros. 
If there are any, it must be in this list. So plus or minus what goes in the numerator? A factor of what? Of a zero, the constant coefficient, so that's this one right here. So plus or minus a factor of one, and then divided by what? A factor of a what? Of the, of the leading coefficient. So what's the leading coefficient? Also one. Okay. So what are the factors of one? <laughs> one. <laughs> and so then one over one. Okay. So uh, that means that that means that how many how many possible how many possibilities are there? Two, Two right? Because there's the pos there's negative one is a possibility and one is a possibility. So those are the possibilities. Now, how do we confirm or deny whether or not they actually are rational zeros by plugging them in? Okay. So now we'll check. Man, it would be really nice if we had some fast way to evaluate uh, polynomials, right? How about Horner's method? Okay, so then in the top row, 1, negative 5, 2, 1. So then you carry down the leading coefficient, and then, and then what? Yeah. So multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So what's the conclusion about negative 1? Is, uh, is it a 0? It is not. How, how can you see that it's not a 0? Yeah, because that's a negative 7. It's not 0. OK, so let's try. Evaluating at 1. 1, negative 5, 2, 1. Okay, so same thing again. <clears throat> so carry down the 1, and then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So how about that? Is 1 a 0? Yeah. It isn't. So what's the correct response to this question? There are no rational zeros. <coughs> so from a teaching point of view, it's important to give a question like this uh, because, because otherwise you might be led to believe that, that there must be a rational zero. There doesn't need to be. But if there are any, then they've got to be in this list. Good. So any question about this one? OK. So now let's, uh, say, factor. I want you to factor h of x is 4x cubed minus 3x minus 1. OK, so we did an exercise like this on Monday, except I gave you another thing. Besides the formula, I also gave you uh, a plot. And what was the usefulness of the plot? What did it tell us about? It, it gave us the intercepts. And why are those important for the task of factoring? Right, because remember we have that theorem that says that x-intercepts are in correspondence to uh, zeros which are in correspondence to factors. So if you had a plot, if you had a plot and you observed that there's an x-intercept at 5, well, then you ought to divide by x minus 5. That would be the, the way to go. But I'm not, I haven't given you uh, a plot. 
So n now I need you to figure out how to, how, how to do it without the plot. So what do we need to do? We factor just factor it. Well, the only way to factor it is if we knew one of the factors already. Because right, this is a cubic, it's not a quadratic. Right. So on, on the one hand, we could just start guessing blindly. We could check like, okay, well, let's divide by x minus 100. But maybe we can come up with a, with a better way. Maybe we could list, <laughs> list out some possibilities. Maybe. Factoring by grouping won't work. Not, not in any way that I can see, anyhow. So what we'll do is we'll do the rational zeros theorem. We'll do the rational zeros theorem and, and, and ask ourselves, well, if there are any zeros that, that happen to be rational, what could they possibly be? OK, so, so the rational zeros theorem is saying that if there are any rational zeros, they must be of the form plus or minus a factor of what goes in the numerator? Which one? Negative one. But I'm just going to write one. And why is that going to be OK? Yeah, because we're going to take all, we're going to take pluses and minuses. So the one there, and then over what? Very good. Over four. And of course, that comes from the leading coefficient. OK. So then, that'd be plus or minus, okay, the numerator will be 1. And the denominator? So what are the, what are the, we need to list out the factors of 4. So what are the factors of 4? 2 and 2, 1 and 4. So 1, 2, and 4. So the possibilities are plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. So how many possibilities are listed here? Six. six. Why six? Right. OK. So uh, rather than guessing wildly, like, you know, maybe we'll try to plug in 13, 14 and see what happens. We could do that. But rather than doing that, you want to try one of these six. This is where you should start. And there's no, there's no good way to, besides, coming de besides narrowing down infinitely many numbers to just six numbers, you can't narrow it down any better. So now you just start guessing wildly. OK, so now I happen to already know the ones that are going to work. So the, for, the purposes <laughs> for the purposes of illustration, I'm going to choose one that's not going to work so you, so you can see what that's like. So now we're just going to start trying, just guessing. OK, so I'm going to guess half. That sounds good. I'm feeling good about half. Uh, so then what needs to go in the top row? Four. Not negative three. Zero. zero. Why zero? Right, because that's how many, squ that's how many squares there are. And then minus, negative three there, and then one. Uh, should be it should be negative one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so now we'll do this. So carry the four down and then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So how about it? Was half successful? No. So you might kind of you know be sad and think, oh, that was a waste. But uh, it's not it's not a complete waste. Why is it not a complete waste? Why is it not a complete why is it not a complete waste? Yeah. There were six options and now now there's five. Right? Okay. So what do you want to try now? Negative half? Okay. Okay, so 
bring the four down and then multiply, add, <coughs> multiply, uh, add, multiply, add. So did we, did we strike gold? Did we win? We did. So I'm going to turn it into a smiley face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so then this, this tells us something. We've now partially factored h of x, so as, as a result of this. So therefore, h of x is what? What's one of its factors? Well, not quite. That's a, that's a zero. Negative half is a zero. So what's, what's a factor? x, x plus one half. Right? x minus the zero that we just found. Of course, a more, a more concise way to write that is x plus half. So that's one of the factors, but what's the other factor? So I should be able to write something else in here. What goes in here? Four x. Well, so this is the degree. Yeah, this is the degree zero term, degree one, degree two. So that's four x squared. So four x squared minus two x minus two. Okay. So any question about getting to here? So now I'm going to simplify this as much as I can uh, here and now because we're going to have to continue. So I'll write this one as x plus half because that, that looks a little nicer. And then what, what can I factor out of all of this? Two. A 2 can come out. So I'll factor the 2 out. And then if I factor the 2 out, uh, then it becomes 2x squared minus x minus 1. OK. And of course, you could write that two at the front if you felt the need. Um, so have we, have we completely factored h? No, right? Because, because we, could, we could potentially factor this. So this could be factored further. We were able to get one factor out, but now there's more work to do. So now we need to continue with this thing. So now. It's a quadratic. That's nice. We have lots of methods to work with. So this, this, uh, this quadratic could be factored by grouping, <laughs> which is that method where you say, uh, can you think of two numbers whose product is the product of the first and last and whose sum is the middle coefficient? We could do that. Uh, but just to, to, to illustrate a different way, I'm going to do something else. So rather, I'm going to do the rational zeros theorem again, but for this one, okay, for this one. So I'll try the rational zeros theorem. But now I'm going to do it on, on this. OK. So if that quadratic there has any, has any zeros, they must be of the form plus or minus. So what goes in the numerator? One, so a factor of one over a factor of what? Two. So that'd be plus or minus one over the factors of two are one and two. So that'd be plus or minus one over one, one over two. So now how many possibilities are listed here? Four, there's actually just three. Why are there just three possibilities? Why are there just three possibilities? Yeah? Well, this says plus or minus one, plus or minus half. So, you know, counting, that's four. But I, but I'm, I claim that there's really just three possibilities. Because we know it's plus one half is one. 
it's not that you might you might say that because of that we're not going to it couldn't be negative half I, I disagree we could we could get that one again Right. Yeah, this one, it, because it didn't work, because this one didn't work for H, it's not going to work for this one either. It's not going to work for this one either. So really the list, the list is uh, negative one, one, and negative half, because we've already eliminated half. The, 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 we've, we've, we've eliminated the, the, the guess one half. So of these three, which one do you wanna which one do you wanna choose? You wanna choose one? Okay. So we start making our tries. So we'll try one. Uh, so I'm gonna do something and please someone tell me what mistake I've made. What mistake have I made? Right, I mean, because those are the numbers, right? No. Oh, yeah, we need to be using these numbers. Okay, so I'm just, I'm pointing this out because this is the kind of, this is the kind of error that I very often see. So, no, not this. Rather, uh, the numbers that we need are 2, negative 1, and negative 1. Okay, so then carry the two down, multiply, add, multiply, add. So did we win? We won, right? Got it. Yay. So now that tells us something further. Uh, that tells us that tells us that h of x. Because of this, what's one of the factors? Because of this x minus 1 is one of the factors. And then what's the other factor because of this? Well, this is the degree 0, and this is the degree 1 term. 2x plus 1. So this one. From there, this one, there, there. So is this right? No. Probably not, because why would I be asking? <laughs> Further, furthermore, can you see that there's asymmetric horizontal space? Yeah. Yeah. That's not my style. So what what goes in there? This stuff, right? <laughs> So I'm pointing that out because this is the other kind of error that I very commonly see, is that student successfully does this and then forgets, uh, forgets th that bit that's up there. So what goes here, there, there's, a, there's a 2 uh, and an x plus half. Okay, now let's simplify this as much as possible. Okay, so... Uh, to, to simplify this as much as possible, I want all the, all the coefficients on the x's to be 1. So that's 1x and that's 1x, but that's 2x. So I want to factor that 2 out. So what would you get if you factored that 2 out? Which is to say, if I, if I factor the 2 out, what gets left in here? x plus half. So can you see that if we, right here, we chose to use 1, what else would have worked? Half would have worked again, right? So it, worked, it would have worked twice. So, so as a result, we can, we can simplify this. So I'll move, the, I'll move the 2s to the front and combine them into a 4, and then x plus half is squared, uh, and then x minus 1 terrific any question about this one so uh, 
I, the, 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 the point of this is that we were able to factor a cubic uh, and all that it took was, uh, you know, we, we used the rational zeros theorem to sort of guide us to some, to, to narrow down our choices and then we just start guessing, right? We had six choices here. Uh, so we tried one, oh, it didn't work. And then we tried one, and, oh, we found one and then just keeps going. So in principle, I could give you a polynomial of like degree seven, and you could do you could do seven of these in a row, right? You 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 take the list of possibilities, you find one, and then that gives you a factor times a polynomial of degree six, and then now you do it on that one, and then you find a factor, and then it's multiplied by a polynomial of degree five, four, three, two, one, all the way down to the bottom. Good. Any question about this? Okay. So, what about uh, when the rational zeros theorem uh, isn't working for you? So, for example, I could say, please, please factor p of x. So, factor p of x is three x squared plus five x minus seven. So now this is a quadratic. So in, 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 in that way, it's even easier than uh, the previous one, which is a cubic. Now the rational zeros theorem says that if there, if there are any rational zeros, what must they be? Plus or minus a factor of what in the numerator? Seven over a factor of what? Three. So those possibilities, I think we're getting good at it now, uh, that would be uh, what? One, uh, one third, uh, seven, and seven thirds. So those eight possibilities. Now I want you, I want you to yourself, I, not here because we have other things to do, I want you to check that none of these work. So none of them are going to work. Well, then what? So in the end, the, rational, the purpose of the rational zeros theorem is to find a zero. But, but this p happens to be a quadratic. And we already have a very good method to find the zeros of a quadratic. In fact, we have a formula to do it. <laughs> the quadratic formula. Okay, let's, let's use the quadratic formula. Uh, so, this, so specifically, you know, what we want is we want to solve p of x is equal to zero. That's what we want to do. So that's saying that 3x squared plus 5x minus 7 is 0. And then we can use the quadratic formula to, to, to deal with this. So that is uh, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 7 all over 2 times 3. Now we've got to do a little bit of arithmetic. So under the numerator would be 5 squared, and then negatives will cancel. Yeah, 100, 109. Oh. Oh, I've got this all messed up. What is it? 4 times 3 times 7. Yeah, 109. Okay. So x is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 109 divided by 6. Now, does, uh, does 109 have a, have a integer square root? It doesn't, right? Because 10 squared is 100 and 11 squared is 121. 
109 is between them, so it couldn't possibly have an integer square uh, root. So the reason, the reason that none of these are going to work, the reason that none of these work is because that doesn't have an integer square root, so, so it won't work. So there's two different, um, there's two different zeros. What are they? Very good. So the zeros are negative 5 plus square root 109 over 6. And the other is x is negative 5 minus square root 109 over 6. So this is, this is just being here is just like having done Horner's table but we found a zero. In fact, we found two of them. If we were to do Horner's table with this number <laughs> and do the multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add thing, we'd get a zero for this one and also for this one. As a result, we know two zeros of p two, uh, and two factors of p. So p of x is equal to so x minus something multiplied by x minus other something. So what goes in those slots? Yeah. This, this zero goes in one of the slots, the other zero in the other slot. So, Gesundheit. Thank you. Negative 5 plus square root 109 over 6, negative 5 minus square root 109 over 6. <clears throat> okay, so now, is this, is this the factorization of P? Is this the right answer? It's not. <laughs> Why is it not? Reasons. <laughs> it's not rational. Sorry? It's not rational. That's not a problem. Okay. It's, fine that, it's fine that the zeros are not rational. That's fine. So I have a question. If we were to, if we were to multiply, yeah. as it's written, if we were to multiply this out and collect like terms, what would the leading coefficient be if we were to do that? It'd be 1. Right, because you, you, the, leading, the leading term would be, would be obtained by taking this x and multiplying it by that x. So it would be 1x squared. But how many of them do we need there to be? Three. 3. So how do we make this right? Yeah, by putting the 3 there. Good. So any question about this? <clears throat> so a fun, if long, exercise is, is uh, to have, you know, like a, like a degree three or four polynomial where, where uh, you, you find one or more rational zeros and then it comes down to a quadratic and then you've got to switch to using the quadratic formula and finish factoring the quadratic like this. Kind of fun, if long-winded. Uh, exercise. Good. Any question about this? Okay. Good. So now, okay, so now we're in the next section. Section Five six, which is called rational functions. So we've been talking about polynomials a lot, right? So we've been factoring them, talking about their zeros, uh, dividing polynomials by other polynomials. 
uh, what is a rational function? Is it the kind of kind of function you take out the coffee and you 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 talk about philosophy like like that kind of function? It could be. <laughs> no, if only, right? Uh, no, a rational function is the ratio of two polynomials. So instead of instead of their instead of it being just one polynomial, now you've got two: one in the numerator and one in the denominator. So proto prototypical example would be something like this: uh, 3x minus 5 divided by x squared plus 1. So we've seen think we've seen expressions like this, but we weren't giving them a name. Now we're giving them a name. Their name is rational function. There's a polynomial in the numerator, 3x minus 5, and a polynomial in the denominator, x squared plus 1. Okay, so, so these uh, kinds of functions have uh, some, some neat properties that we're going to explore. So for example, let's consider pro po possibly the easiest kind, one of the easiest kinds of rational functions. How about 1 over x? So is that a rational function? Well, uh, is one a polynomial? It is, right? What, <laughs> what's its degree? Zero. It's a polynomial of degree zero. So you might not, it might not be, uh, that's not, you don't usually reckon a constant function to be a polynomial, but it is. Two is a polynomial. Uh, and this is a polynomial. It, what's its, the denominator is a polynomial. What's its degree? One. One. What's its leading coefficient? One. What's its constant coefficient? <laughs> the constant coefficient is zero, right? Because it's one x plus zero. How about this? What's, for one, what's the leading coefficient? One. And what's the constant coefficient? Also one, because they're the same thing, right? For, for, for this case. So this, this function is important enough that it has, it, it has its own name. And in fact, we had already given it a name previously in the semester. We called it the reciprocal function. And also, you were supposed to memorize what it looks like. So, so what does it look like? What does it look like? I, I agree that when x gets big, it's got to get smaller and smaller. <laughs> so what's it going to do? Can you remember? This, this, really is, this really is something you have to know. <laughs> it looks like this. So for those of you that just like to know the names of things, that name is hyperbola. So para parabola is, that, is the thing you, that you know what it looks like. And this is something related but different called hyperbola. <laughs> right, not to be confused. OK, so now uh, notably, uh, I have a question about its behavior going to the right. Uh, well, let's go to the left first. As, as x goes to negative infinity, that is to say, as you go to the left and as far to the left as, as, as can be, what does y do? It goes to 0. It goes to 0 because uh, you keep dividing by uh, a larger and larger negative value, like if you divide by, say, negative million, well, that'd be 1 over a million, 
which is really close to zero, but then negative, and that's still really close to zero, but on the other side. Okay, how about as x goes to the right, what does y do? It goes to zero. For similar reasons. So this, this horizontal feature right here, the fact that, that as you go to the right, uh, the function's getting close to y is zero, and as you go to the left, same, thi same thing over there. That horizontal feature is called a horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> so, right there. Okay, do you also observe that for this function, it seems like we've got another one just right there. What do you suppose we're going to call this one? Vertical A vertical asymptote, right? Let's not venture out too far in the naming. <clears throat> uh, but what we need to do is we need to come up with a way to describe what's happening there. So in particular, here's, here's a first attempt. Uh, as x goes to 0, I want to say what y does. But this isn't quite, quite right because it's ambiguous. Why is this ambiguous? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, well, if you, if you happen to be on this part of it, if you happen to be on this part of it and you start going toward x is 0, then, then you start going up. But if you happen to start over here and go towards 0, then you'll go down. So does everybody see that this? This is ambiguous. So, so to, to make it unambiguous, we'll add this superscript, negative, and that means from the left. So as you go to 0, and specifically, that superscript negative means from the left. From the negative sign. So when you do that, uh, what does y do? y goes to negative infinity. Okay. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, how, how, so that says as you go to zero from the left, how, how do you think we can say go to zero from the right? Yeah. A superscript uh, plus sign. What does y do when you do that? Positive infinity. Okay, and this feature, this feature right here, yes, is called a vertical asymptote. And the the line of that vertical asymptote is x is zero. Okay. So now we're going to do it exactly this again, uh, except uh, we're going to move it around so that it's occurring at a different place. Okay, so any question about this one? Okay. So now, just as a brief reminder, can, can you please remind me, what does the graph of y is 1 over x squared look like? It's, it's kind of similar to the reciprocal one, a little bit. How does it look? Well, it can't, it can't be exactly like the hyperbola, the reciprocal one, because the, the, the reciprocal one has some negative outputs. Can, can this one have any negative outputs? No, because, because we're squaring the, that part of the input. 
Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the hyperbola, but we take the negative part and flip it up to the top. Folks, we did this. <laughs> it looks like this one. And I call, at, at the time that we did this, I referred to it as a volcano. OK. <clears throat> so for example, uh, that being the case, what should uh, say um, h of x equal to 1 over x minus 3 all squared and then plus 2 look like? So let's ignore the plus 2 for a moment and suppose that it was just this. What is that, what, what, what effect does that minus 3 have? Because do you observe, it's just like this one, 1 over blah squared. So this is 1 over something squared. But instead of it being x, I changed it to x minus 3. So what is the effect of changing it to x minus 3? A horizontal shift, right? So how is the plot going to move? So I've, I heard right and I heard left. It's one of the two. <laughs> the, I, I mean the picture, the redness. How will the red move? It's going to go to the right. The, 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 the red drawing will move to the right because Again, if you're looking at that and saying, well, you're subtracting 3, why is it not moving to the left? There is something moving to the left. What's moving to the left? The, the axes, the, the graphite thing, is going to move to the left 3 units. Or you can imagine it staying still, and the red thing is going to move to the right 3 units, How, however you like to imagine it. That's the effect of, the, of, of, the, of that. What's the effect of this? It's going to have a vertical shift up two. So as a result, as a result, it's going to be just like that one, except this is saying that we're going to move to the right by three, and this is saying that we're going to move up two. Otherwise, it's going to be just like that one. So. Now, notice that this plot has a vertical asymptote at 0. It has a vertical asymptote at 0. Now, the whole thing is going to move rigidly to the right, so that means that the, that the vertical asymptote is also going to move to the right. So it's going to be over here at 3. Notice also that it has a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. It, too, will move up. And then what will it look like? Still a volcano, right? Yeah. OK, now I have a question for you. Are we running out of time? I hear you all shuffling. Yeah. yeah, we're running out of time. So how about uh, as x? goes to 3 from the left. As x goes to 3 from the left, what? y goes to positive infinite. How about uh, as x goes to 3 from the right? Same thing, right? OK, last one. How about as, how about as uh, x goes to, um, how about 0? No, let's make it uh, something easier. As x goes to 4. Then what?
Well, four's not special like three's special, right? Three's got this craziness happening there. What happens if you go to four? We'll just plug in four, right? So four minus three is one, squared is one, one over one is one plus two is three. So y goes to three. Okay, good. So have a nice Wednesday, see you Friday.